as you can see, we got the grinder and the stuffer out. That means we're making sausage. Today on the recipe, what I got for you is a fantastic Texas brisket sausage. Now, we're going to go 100% beef sausage on here, other than that hog casing that is going in. But I tell you what, folks, uh, we're going to be using our new uh, meat grinder and stuffer. Going to be showing you all those. So, hey, stick around and let's see how we make this fantastic Texas brisket sausage. I am Chef Johnny, and this is Texas Style Cuisine. Appreciate you stopping by very, very much. And these are the new stuffer and grinder we have this year. One and a half horsepower, number 32 head. This thing is a beast. It's gonna, we got a 15 pound brisket in here, folks, and it's gonna grind this thing up in no time, just seconds flat. Two minutes, we're gonna have it ground up in a nice 15 pound stuffer. Let's get to making this brisket sausage. We're gonna start cutting up this brisket. And I tell you what, it's, it's closer to 16 pounds, 15.95. So we got about 16 pounds of uh, sausage we can make today. You want to be in that, really that 30% range. And this one's going to be a little bit leaner because a brisket usually isn't 30%. But as long as you're over 20, 25 to 30 is where I like to be. We got a nice knife kit here from, uh, hey, Mercer Knives. If you've never seen my knife videos, I'll put a link below. You can see the knives I use and kind of talk about why I use them. And here's our brisket. So I'm going to take it and uh, let's just take it out of here. This is just a regular Packer brisket. It's not grated. Uh, if you were to get a choice or a prime, you are going to have more fat in there. I'll raise that fat content. But uh, this one's fairly fat, so I'll, I'm betting you we're over 20%. But I'm going to pull it out of the package. If you wanted to, you could add a little uh, fat back to this. Fat back's great to put in on uh, sausage. The, the pork fat back doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. So by using it, what happens is, is uh, you don't change the flavor of the other meat you might be using. You know, a brisket's pretty, pretty fatty. And uh, we've got a, a big hunk of fat here. It runs all the way through it. So that's where we're gonna get a lot of our fat. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this brisket Come in here, and boy, I tell you what, it's good and cold. You always want your meat good and cold. And we are gonna sit this back into the, uh, the freezer. So I'll just cut this into strips, right? So we're gonna cut this into strips because it's gonna feed into the uh, uh, head of our, of our grinder. But come back. No sense of making it work too awful hard. So it's stripped, and this is a big, big heavy grinder. If you have a smaller grinder, chunk it up or strip it up. Either way will work, but this one's going to be fine for what we're doing. And see that fat line I was talking about? Plenty of fat on this brisket. And when I cut this on the angle, it just it just slims that meat down where it's a little more of a strip. As you can see, Got our brisket all cut up. It's either in uh, strips, not too big, or I've got some chunks that it's in. Those all go through this grinder fine. Remember, if you have a smaller grinder, smaller pieces don't overwork that motor. It's always better to have it too small than too big. Guarantee you that, don't wanna burn anything up. But this brisket's ready to go, got almost 16 pounds. If I was gonna do anything here, might add a little fat to it. You could add some fat back, you could add bacon. Some people don't like to add bacon. I don't mind, it gives me a good flavor. But since I'm going with a, a beef sausage today, we're gonna go just with our brisket and that's it. Gonna put this over in the freezer, let it start firming up a little bit. And if you notice, heads off the grinder over here. That's where it is. I have it over in the, uh, in the freezer cooling down. Important thing about making sausage, keep everything cold, all right? So we're gonna have a pan of ice. Our meat's gonna drop into a pan of ice. This is gonna be firmed up because it's very cold and our head that's gonna be grinding it up, that's gonna be there also. So hey, let's get this in there. And uh, here in a few minutes, we'll show you how we get out the uh, grinding head, put it on and get to grinding this meat. While that meat's cooling down, just gonna show you, got my pan of ice, my catch tray, gonna go in it. That way my meat stays good and cold. But also what I've been doing right now is getting my casings ready. These are hog casings. I've got them in uh, water here. 
warm water soaking. We're going to flush them out. Now, this little package will make 20, 25 pounds of sausage. We do have a stuffer. That'll help you push the meat down in here. But I tell you what, you really don't want to push the meat in tight. You want that auger or that worm gear to pull the meat through. So all you're wanting to do is, is just really kind of feed it into it. If we need this, we got it though. So let's uh, turn it on. And I tell you what's amazing is, if you see my old videos, those loud grinders we have, this one is not loud. How do you like that? Boy, it's a lot quieter than the old ones. I did put a little oil off camera. Y'all don't see I put a little oil between the uh, uh, plate and the cutter so it didn't start up with a lot of friction on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start dropping this meat in. And if you have it here on the plate, it'll drop down so you can, you can drop you a bunch up on here. And I tell you what, I can barely keep up with this grinder. It is flat throwing out some meat here, guys. It is grinding it. All right, if you'll see, all I'm doing with this hand is, is either dropping it in or just pushing it through, pushing it through. Not even having to use that, uh, that plunger at all. But I can use one hand to drop my meat in with, and the other hand keeps filling the plate for me. So I've always got some to drop in. We about have it all ground up. The uh, Last little bit's coming through the worm gear. It's gonna leave a little bit in there. So what I'm gonna do is when this stops, take it apart, pull that little bit out. Uh, we'll mix it with our seasonings. Then we're gonna go uh, back in again and that'll get ground through the next time. I'm just gonna undo this. Pull out our worm gear just a little bit. See that meat I was telling you about that didn't come through? Let's make sure it gets through on the next grinding. Slide it all back up in there. Next step is going to be is get our meat into our mixer. This is a 20 pound mixer. Meat's in there. First thing that's going to go in is kosher salt. And I have, oh, about nine tablespoons of kosher salt. I'm going to spread it around. There we go. First thing's in. And I'm just going to go around a couple of times. And you want to go kind of the same amount one direction that you do the other. So if you go 30 seconds one way, go 30 seconds the other way, or two minutes or two minutes. But get it mixed up good. All right, salt's in. Next thing I'm going to come in and I have five tablespoons of ground pepper. I don't like it too fine of a grind. I found out, you know, the pepper you can buy at... Uh, at Sam's is what they call a table grind, and it really works good for me. I like it. it. Seems to work real well. But you can see it's going to take a little bit to get that pepper up, mixed all the way through. Next ingredient, though, is uh, three tablespoons of granulated garlic. Mix it in a little bit. This is fairly easy. It fits up. If it's hard to turn, you can go ahead and add in some of your uh, water at this time. Last thing I'm going to go in with is I want to make this a little garlicky, right? So I had my base blends in there. So I'm going to add in just this uh, minced garlic, and it's probably, oh, about a half a cup. Get all of it in there. Because I want to have a nice garlic flavor to this brisket sausage we're making today. Deviating from the Texas style brisket a little bit of having so much garlic, but I think it adds great flavor to this sausage. We're going to get started. We've already got some protein extrusion going on, so it's already starting to get a little bit sticky. Probably have to use our plunger this time to just help get it down in there. But we're going to turn it on and uh, see if we can get this sausage ground up the second time through. And again, I do not, uh, I don't like a real fine sausage. So, this is just going to be uh, two times through the coarse, coarse plates. But I think it needs another one besides the, uh, the coarse grind. I may run it a third time, but I usually don't put regular sausage. Any of my wild game sausage, uh, this brisket sausage, my Polish, any of those, I leave the meat a little more texture to it. There you go, we got it through the grinder the second time. What I'm fixing to do now is, 
is I'm going to uh, make a patty, put it on the stove, cook it up. If the seasonings are right, it'll go back into the mixer, two cups of water, mix it up good, then we'll stuff it. Um, if I need to adjust the seasonings, I will during this mix. It does not have to be ground again. It looks like it's going to have plenty of texture and I don't need to get rid of any. I think it's going to be just right. But we're going to get that done and also this is the stage where I would add my uh, Instacure, pink salt, whatever it is you're using if I was going to take this out and put it in the smoker and smoke this salsa. Since it's going to be a fresh sausage, it doesn't need it. So let me cook up that patty, then we'll get back with you and let you know what we think about it. Got them off the stove, tasted great. Seasoning doesn't need anything, texture's fine. So uh, we're gonna go back into the mixer. This will be an easy, easier mix because we're gonna add our water at this time. And remember, if you were gonna smoke these, now's when you'd add in your uh, pink salt. If you were gonna do some type of binder, your milk, uh, bread crumbs, whatever it might be, now's the time you'd do that. Uh, all of it's in there. I've got two cups of cold water. Uh, this was ice that's melted down. There's still a few cubes left in it, but it's going to go in now. Let's start mixing this, and I'm just going to add in my two cups of water. A little bit shy. You can see there's still a little bit of ice floating in there. Very, very cold. We want to keep everything cold. Meat's been in and out of the uh, freezer, keeping it cold. But this is going to help us uh, mix much easier. A lot of people tell you uh, that for an ounce of water for every uh, pound of sausage you're making. And that's, that's probably a pretty good number to figure out. Get it that way, then let's spin it. Go the other way. And we're gonna do this, I don't know, three, four, five minutes, so it starts looking like it's really getting sticky. And when it's getting really sticky, then we're gonna pull it out and stuff it in our cases. Now, we got this mixed up good. Remember to keep your meat in and out of the freezer, keep it cold. My pans have had ice, and then it's put a pan on top of it so it fell down on a nice cold pan. Important thing here making sausages is keep it cold, folks. This meat stuffer is 15 pounds. So we got 16 pounds of meat plus some water. May not get it all in there, may take two times through, but we're going to put it in, throw it in there hard. A lot of times what I do is I make a ball. I know guys show me this that I used to make sausage with. He'd take it and said it forced out all the air. But you want to get the air out of there because we don't want air in our links. Uh, put the meat back in the freezer for a minute to get it cold again. Trying to keep it as cold as we can keep it. I'm going to slide this in place now. And it just comes in here and it's got two little ears it fits under. So it goes in place. Just start your plunger down then. This is a little airport. So as it pushes your meat down, and if you look down here, we can kind of see where it's starting to come out. If you get air pressure in here, if you push this button, it'll let the air out, all right? But I wasn't sure about these plastic tubes. I usually have stainless steel ones, but the nice thing here is you can see where your meat's at in these. So I'm gonna bring it down, back off a little bit. It's about ready to go. Let's get a casing on there. Now, as I was saying, I like to buy the, the Hanks which have the full intestines on them. You can tell I didn't back off enough. I still got a little pressure on it. Still got some meat coming out, but take the pressure off. Then it doesn't come off. So this one, we're gonna have to do a bunch of short sausages where normally I'll do one real long ring. But just come in here, find the end of it. Getting close to the end now, I'm gonna take it. And so these, some of these are slippery and knots will come out. So usually what I do is I just pull a loop in it, put the tag in back through the loop, and it's good. Slide it the rest of the way on. Grab my sausage brick here, and I'll just poke a hole in it. That way it'll let any air out that's in this first part out. And we can start making sausage now. Crank it down, you want a slow, steady speed. You don't want to go too fast. So what we're going to do is start cranking down. You're going to see the meat starting to come out. Now, if you had a way to clamp this down, it'd be good. Didn't bring my clamp with me today. I have used it here at school before, but this is doable by one person, but it's a lot easier with two. 
Don't want to go too full because remember we got to twist off links. And we're just going to crank this up. Again, want to fill it up most of the way, but not so tight that we cannot twist links. When you get almost to the end, you stop because you've got to save room to uh, tie a knot. Just pinch it off. Got our links. And I'll just tie a knot in the end of it. But that's a nice sausage. It's big enough, if you look, to make two links. So I'll cut it, bend it in half. And then I'm just going to twist it right there. And that gives me two links of sausage. Put another casing on. And uh, we're going to do this again and again and again. There you have it. Beautiful tray of uh, Texas brisket sausage. It came out great. Going to throw some of this on the uh, on the grill. Let you see how it turns out. Uh, do some with a sample of that. But I want to give you all a picture of how it looks after it comes off the smoke. Here you go, guys. Uh, give you a look on the pit. About ready to come off. Been on there about 30 minutes at 225 degrees. Get it off here in just a minute. Hey, here you go. Just pulled a uh, sausage off of the uh, off the uh, grill over there. that had the outlaw smoker going. Threw a link on, took it up to about 160 degrees. It looks like it's going to taste really good. It caught some good smoke. Thank you for stopping by Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed that sausage video. We loved it. Uh, the taste was very good. I think I might have added a little bit of more salt, maybe a little pepper to it. Garlic was just fine. But hey, give it a try where it is. Adjust the seasons as you need to. But I go down there, check out my other playlist. Got plenty of those for y'all to find out about my sausage making. Or you know why? Go check out some of my sausage sandwiches and my sausage dogs. Got a lot of sausage videos on here. So check those out for me. Tell your friends and family about us. And we'll see you down the road on Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine.